Today, we're gonna to take the brand new S24 Ultra and cover everything you need to know to shoot ultra cinematic videos with it. Hold on, my alarm's about to go off. So that entire intro sequence was shot on the S24 Ultra and there are a ton of like very little things that I did to increase the cinematic output from that phone. So what we're gonna do in this video is break all of those things down into six major categories and the first one we gotta talk about is the settings. Now settings can seem overwhelming, but you can just copy mine and it's gonna be really simple. First things first, we need to actually go into pro video mode on the S24 Ultra, which is gonna give us the ability to actually control these settings. So on the bottom navigation bar, swipe to where it says more, and then you'll see the pro option on your screen. And actually, if you hold your finger, you can drag that down to the main bar so it's quicker to access in the future. Up first, we wanna make sure our resolution is UHD or 4K. This is a really good balance of ultra high quality with also a manageable file size. After that, we have our frame rate and we are just gonna copy Hollywood here. We're gonna stick to 24 frames per second. Up next, we have a super important setting, the shutter speed. Shutter speed will make your video brighter or darker, but more important than that, it will also control the motion blur. And we really want motion blur in our videos. Like in this frame, you can see the movement in my hands is all blurry. I'm gonna keep my shutter speed at 1 50th of a second throughout this entire video sequence. That almost perfectly replicates the amount of motion blur that our eyes naturally pick up on. And then after that, we have our ISO. ISO is kind of like digital brightness. If you increase it, it's gonna brighten up your image, but it also introduces this terrible looking noise to your videos. So I try to keep that as low as possible. And throughout this video, every shot is at an ISO of underneath 300. And then finally, we have the white balance. This one can be a little tricky because lights have different color temperature associated with them. Some lights are warm, other lights are cooler, some are white like the sun. What I recommend you do if you're brand new and you have no idea what color temperature the lights are in your videos, just stick to auto mode. Let the phone figure out what the color temperature of the scene is, but before you hit record, tap on that auto mode again and switch it back into manual mode. This will make sure that your white balance doesn't change while you're filming, which can give it an amateur look. All right, so category number two is gear. And if you know me or subscribe to the channel, you know I usually don't like to focus on gear, I like to focus on the skills, but there was one piece of gear that really made the look of that sequence at the beginning of the video, and it is this right here. It is a 1.33X anamorphic lens from ShiftCam. Now, if you don't know what anamorphic lenses are, they basically use this optical science to squish the image as it's being filmed, which looks weird, but then once you're editing the footage, you can very easily unsquish the clip which gives us an ultra wide aspect ratio. Something that most people are used to only seeing with Hollywood movies where we naturally have those black bars above and below the video. On top of that, it will also impact the lens flares to give them this horizontal look, which again, you typically only see in high-end productions. Now, if you're wondering how do I actually connect it to my phone, you're gonna wanna get something like this. It's a universal lens mount from ShiftCam, and I'll have links to all of this gear in the description below. Now, after that, the other gear I used in this video is a tri tripod. If you are filming yourself, you're definitely going to need a tripod. My go-to for smartphone content creation is the Yukos tripod. After that, super important, you're going to want to pick up at least one professional light. And professional doesn't mean it has to be super expensive. I actually really like the Godox SL60, which is just over $100. Up next, we have one of the most bang for your buck value pieces of gear for filmmakers, and that is a five-in-one reflector kit. We're gonna break down exactly how this is used in the lighting section of this video, but just trust me, it is a super, super useful tool. Now I'm gonna break down every scene from that video and how I used that gear we just covered to capture the shot. But before we do that, we have to talk about category three, which is planning our videos. I'm a firm believer of the fact that the biggest thing separating amateurs from pros is the amount of planning that goes into their videos. So I think at the bare minimum, what you should do is similar to what I did with this video. I opened up a Google Doc on my computer, I put bullet points for the major scenes that I knew I wanted to capture, and then sub points 
outlining the individual shots I would capture, the camera angles that would then make up that primary scene. For example, if we look at this storyboard here, we have the waking up scene, which has a top-down angle, then it cuts to the end of bed shot, we grab the glasses, and then close up of putting our glasses on. That is then what transitions us into the brushing teeth scene where we have our match cut. I intended on getting a close up, but it didn't fit together in the edit at the end of the day. And then we walk out, which does another match cut to the kitchen scene. And now finally, we've gotten to the point in the video where we can talk about the actual filming process. Diving in here, one of the biggest things that you can do to improve the quality of your videos is to have multiple camera angles in each of your scenes. Now, one of the biggest tips I can give you in this section is to record your scenes multiple times. In the film world, we call this coverage, and usually the more coverage you have, the better. Think about that first scene in the video where I'm getting out of bed. Imagine if the entire process was filmed from that top-down angle. It wouldn't have been that exciting at all. But when we increase our coverage and film some extra, very basic camera angles, like the long shot from the end of the bed, then we have the cutaway where I'm grabbing the glasses, and then finally a close-up of me putting them on, the scene becomes much more dynamic. And no, I didn't have multiple cameras filming all at once. I literally just filmed the scene multiple times where at the end of each take, I would move the camera to a new location, run through the process, stop recording, move the camera again, and so on and so forth. Now, if you're thinking, okay, that makes sense, but how do I set up these camera angles? How do I know if one is gonna look better than another? Well, I can tell you the best practice exercise on planet Earth is to just film a lot of different camera scenes and get an idea for what your personal style is like. But I can give you some general composition tips that will enhance most of your camera angles. Up first, we have the almighty rule of thirds, which is where we divide our frame into this little grid and we place our subjects along these lines or even better, at one of the intersections. After that, you can look for naturally occurring symmetry within your frames, along with looking for naturally existing shapes within your scenes and using that to draw attention to your subject. Then finally, when it comes to composition, you're gonna wanna look for ways to increase depth. And there's two ways to do this. The first is what I'm doing right now. I've literally pushed myself as far as I can to this back wall in my office, which creates physical space behind me. That translates to you watching this video as more depth in the scene. On top of that, we're also using very specific colors to create depth in the scene. In the front, in the foreground, we have my face, which is kind of an orange color. And then in the back, we have those blue LEDs. Now those are very important colors, they're complementary. They're across from each other on a color wheel, which means they naturally have a lot of contrast and will create depth when used properly. Now talking about color naturally brings us to the fifth category in this video, which is our lighting, which can be a very overwhelming topic, but not so much when you break it down into these four major keys. The first is light color, then we have light direction, then intensity, and finally quality. And to exemplify all of these, we can break down exactly how I lit the first scene in my bedroom. So this entire scene was lit by one professional light, and then we had the natural light that was coming in from the windows and the two lamps that I have just within my bedroom. Now, when it comes to how I use the pro light, I was very specific in choosing a color that I thought made sense. So what I did is I took my main light I then grabbed the five-in-one reflector kit that we talked about earlier. When I bounce the pro light off of that gold reflector, it's gonna come back at the main subject with a much warmer tone. Now, as far as light direction is concerned, I just made sure to bounce that in a way where it looked like that light could be coming from the window. That's called motivated lighting. It's trying to direct your light in a way that makes sense based on the area that you're filming in. It wouldn't have made sense if that warm light was coming from behind the headboard of the bed because there's very clearly no window there. Then we have light intensity, which I think is the one that makes the most sense. How much light do you want in your scene? You could over crank it and just blast your subject with an amount of light that doesn't make sense, or you could crank it all the way down and have no light intensity. And then finally, I think one of the most important aspects of lighting comes down to the quality. Is our light hard or soft? Hard lighting looks like this. It's not flattering, it has harsh shadows, it's gonna show off pimples, blemishes, it's just not really what we want in most scenarios. Whereas soft lighting looks like this. 
It's much more flattering, forgiving. The shadows roll off in a more cinematic fashion. This is what we want most of the time. Now, the way you turn a hard light into a soft light is by making the light source bigger. What you're seeing on screen right now are soft boxes, lanterns, and other light modifiers that you can place in front of your light source basically increasing the size, which will make it much softer on the subject. But in keeping things as budget friendly as I could in this video, I literally just used a white bed sheet. By placing that between the source of light and myself in the scene, it softened that light and really enhanced the look of the final video. Now to break down some of the other shots in this video and how they were lit, when we were in the bathroom, we already actually had some lights on the wall with this glass coating on them that is also gonna diffuse the light, so I just ran with that. When we were in the fridge, there's already a really nice soft light coming out of that fridge, but it's kind of directed within the fridge and not back at me as the subject. So all I did was take a small LED light that costs like $70, I put it in the fridge and had it directing back at me so the main subject was still relatively well lit. And then for the rest of the shots in the video, I used nothing but natural light in my car. And then obviously I had little to no choice on the lighting in the grocery store because I wasn't gonna bring pro lights or anything like that into the grocery store. And then finally, category number six, we have the editing process. Before I give you my top tips on editing cinematic videos, I do wanna talk about our full online course, 14 Day Filmmaker. My gut tells me that if you've made it this far in the video, you are very serious about becoming the best content creator you can possibly be using your smartphone. And in case you didn't know, at contentcreator.com, we have a course bundle called 14 Day Filmmaker that's helped over 120,000 people. When you enroll, you get the most streamlined video training sequence that walks you through every single aspect of going from knowing nothing to shooting and editing cinematic videos to being a true master of the craft. And we're actually able to teach you all of this in under 14 days, but beyond that, we have tons more trainings you get access to for life, all for under $48. You don't just get the trainings though, you also get tons of bonuses like editing cheat sheets, templates, free sound effects. You get access to our private community filled with tens of thousands of students where I also host a live weekly Q&A call to answer any questions you have. And that's not even mentioning the bonus courses you get like 14 Day Filmmaker Pro Camera Edition and 14 Day YouTuber, which we just added. It is an awesome course and community to be a part of and it is the most affordable of its kind on planet Earth. And if you don't see an immediate improvement in your videos, you can get your money back. We've also included a full step-by-step -step walkthrough of how I edited the entire cinematic sequence from this video, how we put together the clips, managed the transitions, how we did all of the color grading to get it looking super professional. If you're interested, the link to enroll for just $48 is in the description below. But all right, back to the main topic here. What are my top tips for editing cinematic videos? The first tip I have for you comes down to the pacing of the video, which in most sequences like this, I use the music to define my pacing. Watch just a quick portion of this video and you'll notice that all the cuts between clips fall on one of the beats of the song. Matching the rhythm of the song to the cuts in the video are a great way to keep the pacing and energy high, which in turn keeps the viewer retained throughout the video. As far as finding music for your videos is concerned, you can go to YouTube's audio library, which is a playlist of tons of decent quality, copyright free music. Aside from that, I like Epidemic Sound. Now another pro tip for people who are constantly filming by themselves, where their camera is just static on a tripod. When you're editing your videos, you can actually create some movement by keyframing zooms in your videos. Here's what the intro of my sequence originally looked like. It's not bad, but watch how more immersive that same sequence is when we have very subtle zooms in those intro clips. This is a really easy process in editors like CapCut, DaVinci, Premiere Pro. You just create a keyframe with the scale parameter at the beginning of the clip, and then at the end of the clip, you increase the scale ever so slightly, which will create a new keyframe, and now you've got your smooth zoom. And then the last pro tip that I recommend all editors really lean into is the use of sound design throughout your videos. Here's what this one video sequence looks like with only sound design and no music.
Now, some of these sound effects I actually downloaded online from contentcreatortemplates.com, but for a lot of the sounds like brushing my teeth or opening up the fridge, I actually just used a small handheld mic. You could even use the microphone on your phone if you wanted. From there, I was able to pull the audio into the timeline, align it with the actions that were happening in the video, and voila, we have a much more immersive experience. And that officially does it for this video. You've just gone through an entire crash course on filming, especially with the S24 Ultra. But I'm sure as you've imagined at this point, almost everything we've talked about in this video can apply to any phone, any camera. And that's because these laws of cinematic filmmaking, they're fundamental. They go beyond the camera. But thanks again for tuning in. If you found it valuable, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Which by the way, I've got two videos on screen right now that I really think you'd love. Bye.